There's been a lot of talk about campus rape and sexual assault lately. California has just instituted a yes means yes law that is awful and could criminalize some consensual sex between college students. Even people who publicly admit this is a terrible law support it because there's this attitude that, well, we must pass a law to fix this, even though, of course, rape and sexual assault are already against the law. I say a better idea, and Reason Magazine recently wrote about this, is to rethink the drinking age. The drinking age in the U.S. is 21. By 18, you can legally vote, marry, serve at a jury, buy cigarettes, join the military, but you cannot have a sip of beer. If you think that's ridiculous, it's because it is. It wasn't always like this. At one time, after Prohibition, states set their own drinking ages. In the 70s and early 80s, in many states, the drinking age was 18. But then the federal government came and they were like, hmm, how can we force every state to set their drinking age to 21? And then they were like, I know, let's bully the states. In 1984, Congress passed a law that told the states, raise your drinking age to 21 or we'll cut 10% of your federal highway funding. Basically, it was blackmail. By 1988, 21 was the legal age in every single state. 21 is the highest drinking age in the entire world, with a couple exceptions for a few Muslim countries that completely outlaw alcohol. In most countries, it's 18 years old or less. U.S. is one of only three developed countries in the world that have drinking ages over 18. In Iceland and Japan, it's 20. All right, so you may be saying, how in the world would lowering the drinking age combat sexual assault? How would allowing college students to get drunk? How is that a solution? Um, maybe some parents might not want to hear this, so I ear must, but college students are already getting drunk. I've seen it with my own eyes. The drinking age has approximately stopped zero people from getting yammered. Now, don't get the wrong impression of me. I was never much of a party girl at all. Nobody ever said, oh, Borowski's here. Party's on, yeah, party time. Oh yeah, Jaeger bombs. But I graduated a couple years ago, so I've seen what goes on, all right? We saw how alcohol prohibition in the 1920s didn't work and made drinking more dangerous. The same type of things are happening on college campuses today with 18 to 20 year olds. 18 to 20 year olds cannot legally drink at bars, restaurants, concerts, anywhere out in the open where there's sober staff watching you, where there's somebody who's generally trusted making your drink and can cut you off. There's generally more accountability. Yeah, it's not perfect, but I've never seen somebody passed out in the middle of the bar with puke surrounding them. Just saying. Alcohol prohibition just drives underage drinking underground behind closed doors where it's more dangerous and binge drinking is more common. I've seen how it promotes a let's get so wasted that we can't remember our own names attitude. Here's your typical college house party. There's a big tub, usually it has red stuff in it. People come by and they dip their cup into it and they drink it. It's called jungle juice. Underage people rely on other people to provide them with alcohol. Some fraternities are trustworthy and they put, you know, the typical Kool-Aid and vodka into the jungle juice. And some fraternities are sketchy and they put cough medicine into their jungle juice so the girls pass out quicker. That's a true story, so take your chances while you're drinking jungle juice in the dark basement of a frat house. And if it looks like somebody may have alcohol poisoning, likely no one is going to dial 911 because nobody wants to get busted by the cops for alcohol. And most rape and sexual assault on college campuses involve alcohol and a friend or an acquaintance, somebody you know. Sometimes the person is passed out, clearly too drunk to give consent or blacked out. Most of the times, these go unreported. You may say, well, they just need to increase enforcement of underage drinking. But personally, at my own college, what I saw when they increased enforcement is it didn't actually reduce underage drinking. 
what it did was drive drinking more underground, more secret, making it legal for college students to drink will not solve everything, but I do believe it will make drinking, which they're going to do anyway, more safe and it will discourage binge drinking. Last point and maybe the most important point, stop treating college students like children. Stop coddling them. They're adults and they should be able to make their own decisions. We don't need more laws policing our behavior.